So a quick recap before we dive into seed treatment and uh, crop establishment. What we did in the first video was introduce that we are on a green maize challenge for Mrs. Lousy and for every farmer out there that has been on a green maize journey before and it didn't uh, give them the, the money they were looking for. We are here to try and get that money. We talked about 150,000 kwacha per hectare. We are out here uh, on, a, on an acre plot to demonstrate uh, uh, just about 75,000 kwacha from this acre. And we, we saw today, uh, uh, we want to recap the first session where we talked, it starts with you knowing your soils. And so what we did uh, last time is show you the soil analysis results, uh, run through the interpretation, and then we recommended what quantities of uh, nutrition, what the soil status was telling us, what crops can be grown in here, and what quantities of nutrition we will need to extract. Remember, there is the sayings, you are what you eat, and some of the yields that are bad are because of poor feeding, and in here we want to focus on uh, good feeding for the crop so that we extract the uh, volumes uh, or amount of, uh, of cobs that we're looking for based on the nutrition program. And then we also touched on land preparation. You, as you can see, I am in permanent seed beds. And we, we said your land prep uh, focuses more on how deep you go because you want your roots to continuously go deep and not labor to dig it uh, its, its way down the, the, the profile. And so the land prep must really be around ripping and, and, and an open profile. But then today we are focusing on the seedbed. The seedbed must be just a 10 to 15 centimeter depth profile with a fine tilth. A fine tilth um, is really a soil that will provide you a good seed to soil contact. That is what promotes good germination of the seed because what we're looking for is a good uh, field emergence uh, and, and if we had as an example some big clothes you find that you restrict the seed from coming out but these beds have properly been prepared uh, for that fine tilth and it's got enough moisture um, where I'm picking from is where exactly the drip emitter is at and in school they taught the field method and they said when you have your palm weight like that, that's uh, field capacity and that's good enough to actually uh, germinate a crop. And so we will be on to seed treatment uh, today and join me uh, as I treat the seed. Whenever you will embark on a, any crop production journey, we emphasize it starts with the right seed. And because it's green maize, uh, our advice to the farmers is go yellow, go 608, uh, SC608 from Sitco, and then uh, if you want to go white, go SC555. We will delve deeper into the qualities of these varieties that make them uh, the better choices for green maize. Uh, but for now, please join us as we treat the seed uh, so that we can take it in uh, for planting. The seed comes treated with a fungicide and an insecticide and it's the Rolls Royce of industry fungicides and insecticides that we use. You do not need to worry about fungal diseases and insecticide treatment. The main focus for today is really nutrition. Um, most of you must have seen this product before, Plant Catalyst. It's really a natural product. No, no need for me to really be safe, but we always want to prioritize safety. And so every one of us is in gloves because we have that aspect of treatment. And also because on the uh, seed as we are receiving it from the bag, there is some uh, fungicide on it and an insecticide. The fungicide is, uh, the insecticide here is Cruza, which is broad spectrum on many uh, insects, but we are aware that there is lots of leaf hoppers that have come up now that are attacking the crop uh, uh, between field emergence to about uh, flowering, which can impede your yields that you have financed 
with all these other things and so we came armed to also treat um, uh, the seed with an imidacropid product ideally imidacropid 600 and when we couldn't find it in the market we decided to get an imidacropid uh, 300 so the 300 will uh, because today we do not have respirators we will rather drench it uh, later in the field which we will show you and so we are not focusing on this for, for the uh, purposes of safety because we needed respirators for this uh, but today we are focusing more on the plant catalyst and the active 3030 these will just give the energy and oomph for the plants to come out quicker despite uh, uh, the restricting soil conditions uh, in this cold weather. And all this is just plant nutrition um, that we are mixing into here. And we thoroughly, thoroughly shake. Thoroughly, thoroughly shake. And then we just take it round like that. You see there is a bit in there, I will put a bit of some water but for pouring onto the treatment uh, later. For now, let me just thoroughly mix so that each seed has got um, the seaweed extract, the, the silica that's from the plant catalyst and uh, the zinc that is essential for uh, zinc. I usually call it for young plants, young maize, as the under five uh, treatment for young maize. And so the young maize will grow healthy, like our children grow healthy when we are consistent with uh, all the under five uh, appointments. So you see how quickly it has gotten onto almost every seed. Mrs. Mwamba, as you can see, it's even now dry. The air runs on it, it's dry and, um, and, and good to go. So you, you, you just, the moment you finish running uh, the mix, the slurry onto the seed, you are good to go and, and plant the field. All right, so there you have it. We have our first batch of about five to six uh, rows of seed treatment done. Um, we could have done it bigger, we could have done the whole 10 kgs treatment uh, but because we are planting in, in segments we go uh, little by little to just have enough seed for 10 rows uh, per time and so Mrs. Mwamba we, we have the seed ready to plant any questions before we proceed? Yeah I just wanted to find out I mean we're, there's so much sunlight here and uh, when you're mixing something uh, most people would prefer that you're in the shade is it okay that we're doing this in the sun? Yes, so uh, the products that we have today are natural products. Um, a natural and a chemical, fertilizer chemical product. Active 3030 is zinc uh, predominantly in there uh, and some seaweed extracts in there, which is natural uh, plus mineral. Um, plant catalyst is seaweed extract plus salicylic acid and, and, and all that. They are natural products, not affected by direct sunlight. But if we will do soybean treatment, soybean inoculant, two reasons why you must be in the shed. Soybean inoculant is living organisms. They don't uh, fare well with direct sunlight, so we must be in the shed when treating. And then also, if you are treating big uh, uh, quantities for big yeah. fields, you really, because you take so long, you do not want to weary even your labor with direct sunlight. Absolutely. So you could have treated already under the shed and then you bring uh, the, the treated seed to the field for planting. So how long can you can you keep the seed? I mean, the way we've treated it today, uh, how long can I keep it uh, in order to, so if, let's say that maybe there's a delay in planting or something, how long can I keep it like this? Good question. I think what's treated here, uh, if it's kept from moisture and anything, kept in dry air, it can stay on for a month, two months, and then you come and plant it. 